On today's Winning Cures Everything, it is time to preview week number eight. We're going to talk about where college game day is going next week, week number nine. I got some early game previews, the most unlikely wins from week number seven, and of course, the college football viewing guide. So let's not waste time. Let's get to it. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything. Of course, this is the Monday, October 16th edition of the show. I'm your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at GaryWCE. You can follow me on Twitter at Winning Cures. You'll see it on the screen here. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you're watching on YouTube, that's where you can find it. Uh, we appreciate you guys being here today. We got a lot to talk about. Uh, on the, the way that the schedule is shaping up, it looks like it's going to be Sundays, Mondays, and Thursdays. That's going to be the easiest time for me to be able to get out these videos, so make sure that you are prepared uh, for those. So the Monday shows, we're going to do the early game previews because now, this season, thanks to the Conference USA uh, having a new TV deal with ESPN and CBS uh, Sports Network, etc. We have got midweek games from the beginning of October all the way through uh, the end of November, from what I understand. So in November, we start to get MAC, uh, well, MACTION games on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But Conference USA started in October this year. It gives us something to do in the middle of the week. So we will be doing that. Uh, make sure that you check out the Bet US College Football Show. That's right, every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. There's a link in the description. You can, of course, uh, get subscribed over there. We would certainly appreciate that. Uh, along with that, Thursdays, Three Dog Thursday. T.J. Reeves, along with a different guest each and every week, uh, they're going to talk about college football underdogs that could that should come out about 2 p.m. Central Time uh, every single week. So we've got the Bet U.S. College Football Show. we got Three Dog Thursday. Uh, if you want to support the show, there's a new membership function that you can do on YouTube, or you can just go over to buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Uh, over there, I've got my full list of projected scores based on full season stats over there. So go ahead and uh, and check that out if you would so kindly. And if you want to see my plays each week, you can follow me on Telegram at GaryWCE. I post up everything that I play every week over there. That way you can get an idea of where I've got the number, et cetera. I try and tell you where I like it to if, uh, if that number is no longer available, et cetera. So... Uh, if you want to join in, that one—that one's free. Telegram's free. So, uh, along with that, let's see what else have we got today. Uh, I think. Oh, hey, uh, well, Ticket Smarter, but I'll tell you about Ticket Smarter here in a little while. Ain't no thing. Let me let me make sure and write a note down for that one. Uh, hopefully, everybody's been good. Uh, it's been a, a fun week. This is rivalry week for Alabama and Tennessee, and Ohio State and Penn State and whatnot. So, lots to get into with that. Let's go on and start off with. Of course, the biggest brand... Well, we're going to do the, the Week 8 preview right now, okay? And then I'll do the uh, Where is Game Day Going for Week 9. That's the run-through for this. Uh, college Football Viewing Guide. Then we'll do the Most Unlikely Wins, and then I will do, very quickly, the Early Games. So, let's fire into this bad boy. Let's, uh, let's write down the time, and let's get into it. The biggest brand games, or who is going to get the biggest TV ratings this week? I know that there's some of y'all that are interested in this. Uh, Penn State, Ohio State is, I mean, that's no question. No question. That's going to be the biggest one. It's two undefeated teams. Uh, I believe it's two top six teams. I th well, no, no, no. Uh, Washington moved up. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. Two top seven teams. Uh, pretty big in the Big Ten. Pretty big in the national title picture. That one's probably going to do $9 million, I'd guess, on Fox. So, pretty big game there. Tennessee at Alabama. 3.30 p.m. on CBS, uh, 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 2.30 Central, God's time zone, of course. That one's going to be big. It's not as big as if like as it was last year, but there is a possibility where this one could end up doing, you know, 7 million, 8 million, something like that, uh, because there's not a ton of competition in the time slot. Michigan at Michigan State. That one's going to be pretty big. Uh, but again, it's going to be a blowout, so... You know, or it should be a blowout. We'll say that. If that thing ends up being tight, yeah, that's going to do a huge number. I still think it's going to be pretty big. I think it'll be the third biggest game of the day. Texas at Houston. 
I expect that one to be pretty big. That's, if I'm not mistaken, the Longhorns' first trip to Houston in, I mean, decades. Decades. And, and they typically would not go in there and do that. <laughs> but uh, but the Big 12 wanted to make sure that, uh, that Texas visited Houston one time before they head over to the SEC. Uh, Utah at USC on Fox on Saturday night. That one's going to be pretty massive. And then Ole Miss at Auburn on ESPN Saturday night. I think that one's going to be pretty big as well. So those are the biggest brand games, what I expect to get the biggest TV ratings. Uh, and again, you guys can jump in the comments. Let me know if you agree, if you disagree, if you think that there's another game that's going to do really, really well. Let me know. I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. All right, the most interesting storylines to watch from week number eight. And the first one on the board for me is Ole Miss and Auburn. Now this one, of course, everybody thought that Lane Kiffin was going to take the Auburn job. He did not. He stayed at Ole Miss. So Auburn goes out and hires former Ole Miss head coach Hugh Freeze. And, yeah, this will be the first time that Hugh has gotten to play against Ole Miss, at least at Auburn. Uh, he did go to Oxford as the head coach of Liberty. I, I'm curious what the dynamics are going to be like. You know, we did just see Dana Holgerson play against West Virginia last week, you know, while he's the head coach at Houston. Uh, does Hugh have something up his sleeve? That's what I'm curious about. And Lane, uh, is he? does he have something in store for Auburn? Does he not like the way things went down? Does he, you know, what What does all of this mean? I'm very curious. Uh, Clemson at Miami. That one is on ACC Network. Those two big brands, both of them already have two losses on the season. It's going to be in Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Uh, okay. Okay. Like, this is, whichever one of these loses the game is going to have two or three ACC losses uh, by, you know, middle of October. That's kind of interesting, right? Because both of these seemed, you know, Clemson, for sure, in the preseason, everybody thought, okay, definitely. Miami came out hot, got that big win against Texas A&M. And then, of course, the, the kneeling fiasco, they got to go to North Carolina. They lose that one. Uh, now Miami looking to avoid a third straight loss, but Clemson looking to avoid a third ACC loss by the middle of the season. Memphis at UAB. This one is interesting, if for no other reason than it's a kind of under-the-radar rivalry game that has not been played in a very long time. This one's in Birmingham. Uh, Memphis just lost last week to Tulane. Only their second loss of the season, but their first in the conference. UAB, if they're trying to make some noise, this would be one that they would want to get, especially at home. I think it would really make the fans happy. So that's one to keep an eye on. Uh, Mississippi State at Arkansas. That's an interesting one. So interesting storyline there. Um, at the, both of those coaches might be fighting for their jobs here. Zach Arnett, eh, things are not going so well in Starkville. And Sam Pittman, of course, uh, the Arkansas head coach, uh, they have lost, is it five straight? I mean, it's it, a lot of games in a row. Now you get one at home that you should win. You're favored by seven. Mississippi State, again, has not looked very good. But a eh, little bit of an anxiety bowl, as Stephen Godfrey would say. That's certainly uh, certainly an anxiety bowl. And then uh, the most interesting story line, of course, Texas heading to Houston. That one is going to be very interesting as well. I'm it, it, The point spread is bananas. Texas coming off of a bye after losing to Oklahoma. They should come out like gangbusters. But Houston, it appears, has gotten their passing game figured out. So, are they going to be able to do anything against that Longhorns defense? They are at home. I would imagine that place is going to be packed out, but it might be packed out with Texas fans. So, <laughs> so we'll see what that one looks like. That one's an afternoon game on Fox. That, that should be interesting. Uh, the most exciting games this week, or the closest scores. Uh, Penn State, Ohio State, I've got that down. Tennessee, Alabama, I put that one down. And uh, in UTSA at FAU. Now, there's way more interesting games, uh, not interesting, way more exciting or close score games this weekend. I'm curious your thoughts in the comments. Toss them in there. Let me know what you think. But those are the, the top three that I think are going to be the most interesting, uh, at least at the end of the game. We'll say that. We'll say that. All right, what teams have the most to gain and the most to lose this week? Hmm. Clemson and Miami both, most to gain, most to lose, right? This is just a massive, massive game uh, for both of these programs. So that one's one to watch. Uh, Texas-Houston, 
Most to lose for Texas. That these Apple Watches, I swear to God. <laughs> uh, Texas and Houston, uh, certainly most to gain, most to lose there. Texas, you lose a second straight Big 12 game? Yeah, that's going to be an issue. Uh, Houston, doesn't matter so much if you lose, but man, there's so much you can gain. Like Dana Holgerson could totally win his job back. He could. There's so many different things that could go well for him if he were to beat Texas uh, the only time that the Longhorns are going to come into Houston's stadium. That would be huge. Absolutely huge. And then uh, Tennessee, Alabama. Both teams already with an SEC loss. Uh, kind of didn't expect for both of them to have a loss by this point, but it is what it is. Uh, that's going to be interesting because it, it's interesting for the SEC race. Most to gain, most to lose for both of those teams there. Because if Alabama ends up with two losses before you know the end of October, eh, how big is that LSU game going to be, et cetera, right? So there's lots at stake for that one. Uh, I've got quite a few teams on the docket on this one. Who are the most likely outright underdog winners? So I've got a few. Um, Mississippi State at Arkansas. Would it surprise you at all if the Bulldogs go into, you know, Reynolds Razorback Stadium and get a win over Sam Pittman? That, I mean, that Arkansas team has been through an absolute gauntlet. Would it surprise you if they were able to swing that upset? Arkansas has fought in every game thus far, have not been able to get a win. Uh, I don't think it would surprise me. Penn State at Ohio State. I think Penn State might be the better team. They might have the better quarterback. Yeah, I think the defenses are very comparable. Yeah, that one's going to be interesting. Uh, I think Penn State most likely underdog uh, to win outright. Uh, FAU against UTSA. FAU is at home. They are a three-point dog to UTSA. I, I think I said it on this show a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago. When Casey Thompson went down, I'm not certain that the FAU team didn't get better because I think I think the Central Michigan transfer, Daniel Richardson, is a better quarterback. I think. Definitely showed out last week against uh, USF. BYU against Texas Tech. Night game, BYU vampire game. Uh, I think BYU probably should be favored here. We shall say. Now, they're kind of beat up. But so is Texas Tech. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, Utah State, an underdog at San Jose State. Uh, Cooper Lega, the quarterback, uh, that dude is feisty. And in the second half, it, it's very obvious that Blake Anderson has been making some adjustments in the second half. So that is uh, is one that I would I would look at. And then uh, Miami is a three point dog to Clemson right now. This is still a pretty good Miami team. Um, they had some things go against them last week, but the numbers were still good. Uh, at home, back against the wall, as Pate would say, you know, wounded animal mode, whatever. Yeah, I'm a, I'm interested in that. I'm very interested in that. Uh, the G5 game of the week. Let's move on to that. The G5 game of the week. I've got, I've got several. Uh, Memphis UAB is certainly one. Uh, that's a big rivalry game. It's going to be in Birmingham this year. So that is one to uh, to pay attention to. Air Force and Navy. Yeah, that's interesting. Navy has not been great. They did get a win last week against Charlotte. Defense has actually showed up pretty well. These two teams know each other so well. And as good as Air Force has been, eh, they don't they don't really blow out other service academies. At least not that often. So that, I think, is going to be a fascinating game. Toledo and Miami of Ohio. That's a very interesting MAC game. I think that one's going to be a whole lot of fun. Uh, Miami is favored by half a point here. I think Jason Candle only does Jason Candle things against lower-level MAC teams. So I would imagine that the Rockets are going to show up for this one, but we shall see. I think Miami of Ohio is a fantastic football team. They are so good. Uh, with Gabbert back at quarterback, the offense is actually clicking. We knew the defense was going to be good. Knew the defense was going to be good. Uh, UTSA and FAU, obviously, that could be a G5 game of the week. But, you know, there's so many other ones. Uh, Georgia State, Louisiana, that one's going to be fun on Saturday. And Colorado State at UNLV. 
What a comeback by Colorado State last week. <laughs> Just unbelievable. But UNLV with Barry Odom as head coach. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. They are looking fantastic right now. All right. Moving along. Where is ESPN's college game day going in week number nine of the 2023 college football season? And I got to tell you, it's pretty slim pickings. Okay. Uh, this could absolutely be one of the weeks where they end up going to an FCS program, whatever that might be. The only ones that I'd see that they might might want to take the the traveling show to, Northern Colorado plays at Montana. It's not going to be a good game, but they might want to showcase Montana again. Maybe. Uh, and then East Tennessee plays at Furman. Furman has been pretty good for multiple years now. A really good program. And it's not that far of a drive, right? <laughs> it's a pretty easy tr uh, trip for them. So you wouldn't have to spend a whole lot. You could showcase a, uh, an FCS school, possibly, right? Uh, if you do decide to go to a big game, you got to have a lot of things go right in week number eight, okay? Uh, Florida, Georgia, that's an easy one. It's in Jacksonville. They haven't gone there in quite some time because, honestly, Florida has not been that good. But that would be a place to go. Georgia is still number one in the country. Both of those teams have a bye. Florida, of course, beat South Carolina. I think that's probably where they're going to end up because it, it's easy, right? Florida is 5-2 and two and looks pretty good. Like that's, that's a possibility. And Georgia looks vulnerable enough to where eh, that game might not be like a 30-point spread, right? I mean, Georgia had trouble with Vanderbilt last Saturday. So both of those coming off of a, uh, a bye week, you already know what the records are going to be. You know it's going to be a big game. If you're wanting to showcase the SEC, since, of course, the Southeastern Conference is moving over to the Disney family of networks next year, that would be one that you could do. Uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. Now, Kansas has already gotten two losses. Maybe, uh, I don't know who they play this week, but you would certainly need, you know, things to go well for that one. Uh, Kansas plays, and I don't see it. Maybe they don't play. Yeah, I guess that's a possibility. Either way, either way. Uh, Oklahoma, you would need them to beat UCF. Uh, Kansas, you know, you hadn't been there in a while, but... It feels kind of weird going to Kansas uh, after they just lost to Oklahoma State, and you don't know if the Kansas quarterback is going to play. Like, Jason Bean has been fantastic, but either either way. And then, of course, the, the third option, if they don't go, I guess fourth option, if they don't go FCS, Florida, Georgia, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Oregon at Utah. Tough place to play, but... How good is this Utah team? And you would need Utah to win at USC this week for that one to make sense. So, of course, you've also got Oregon coming off of a loss against uh, Washington just last week. If you can get them to turn around and, and kind of blow out Washington State, you know, do big things again, maybe that one makes sense. If you get a one-loss Utah and a one-loss Oregon, that could be the biggest game of week number eight. But Halloween weekend, not looking... Not looking like a massive, massive weekend. There's no massive matchup, uh, so it's not a super easy one to do. I would go to, um, I would go the FCS route. I'd probably go over to Furman because they, they've had a good program for years and years now. Don't think that's one that's been showcased. So, but that's what. That, so I would do the FCS thing. I think they're probably going to go to Jacksonville. I think they're going to the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. I think that's what they're going to do. All right. Let me tell you right quick. Ticket smarter. Ticket smarter. That's right. Uh, you can go to ticketsmarter.com. Use the promo code WCE10. WCE10. That's going to give you $10 off an order of $100 or more. Or use the promo code WCE20. WCE20. You'll get $20 off an order of $300 or more. And the best part about this, you don't have to use it just one time. It's not a one time, you know, for new users kind of thing. You use that thing as many times as you want to. So go over to TicketSmarter.com. It's a third-party ticketing app. It's It costs a bunch of money to get into these games, get into concerts now, etc. Take a little money off. WCE10 or WCE20 over at TicketSmarter. Think smarter. Ticket smarter. All right. 
It's time for the college football viewing guide for week number eight. And let's pull it up on your screen here so that you can see what I am doing. All right, so Tuesday night. Tuesday night, uh, I'm probably going to be watching Western Kentucky at Jacksonville State. That's going to be on my main screen. Uh, You guys see here in the background, I got three TVs back there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have all three on. But the main screen is going to have Western Kentucky and Jacksonville State. I think that was going to be fantastic. Wednesday, the game I am the most interested in on Wednesday, New Mexico State at UTEP. Uh, that is a massive rivalry. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see if UTEP can do the same thing that they did in the first quarter last week against FIU. Uh, they, you know, changed quarterbacks. They were able to hit some passes. Things look good. You know, is what it is. Thursday, I'm going to watch James Madison at Marshall. I got to figure out what happened to Marshall. So that that was my Sunbelt East pick this year. Uh, their run defense has just been terrible, terrible. Uh, Friday, SMU at Temple. Yeah, uh, the, the only game that's on on Friday night. Uh, that is if I don't go to a, um, if I don't go to one of the high school games around here. Saturday. All right. So the noon's late. Noon's late. I am going to have the main screen on Fox. I'm going to have Ohio State and Penn State on, and I think that's going to be, uh, you know, I, I, it's going to be a fantastic ball game. I know that much. Uh, on my secondary screens, I'm going to have Air Force and Navy on one of them because I am a sucker for option football and service academies and all that, and, and I think this Air Force team is really, really good. <laughs> uh, my other screen, I'm going to have... Uh, Arkansas and Mississippi State. I want to see what happens in Fayetteville. Uh, anxiety bowls are always a lot of fun. If that one gets out of hand, I'll probably flip over to Oklahoma and UCF. Because even if that thing's out of hand, uh, Jeff Levy's offense is entertaining. So uh, Memphis UAB might might make its way onto the screen at some point. Uh, that's probably going to be a laptop game. Laptop, iPad, whatever. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm looking at for that 11 o'clock slate. 2.30 p.m. Central Time. God's time zone on CBS. Alabama hosting Tennessee that's the game that I'm going to be watching at 2.30. So, just just to pay attention. Uh, my other two screens, I'm going to have Oregon at Washington State, or excuse me, Washington State at Oregon uh, on ABC on one of them. And the other screen, I have not decided on yet. Uh, I think Oklahoma State at West Virginia could be very interesting. But, you know, Texas at Houston, I think I'm just going to want to see the fanfare, especially at the beginning of that one. So... You know, Big 12 games, I don't know that you can really go wrong with those. So, South Carolina at Missouri might be interesting for a little bit. Uh, I think North uh, North Texas and Tulane is going to be interesting for at least a little while. But we'll see. We shall see. Uh, Moving into the evening slate. My main screen is going to have Lane Kiffin against Hugh Freeze. That's what I'm going to have. It's at Auburn, at Jordan-Hare, 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. That's what I'll be watching there. I'm I'm so interested in that ball game. I mean, maybe who knows? Maybe I'm a sucker for that. Uh, Michigan, Michigan State might be interesting for a while. Uh, that's not going to be one of my screens. I think that that might be my iPad. Uh, and then Duke at Florida State. I want to see if that Duke defense can make some plays against. Like they kind of rely on their wide receivers a lot, uh, but Florida State has got the wide receivers to actually be able to to do something against them. So. Yeah, uh, that's that one might be interesting for a little bit. Utah at USC, that one could be interesting. Clemson at Miami, uh, definitely going to be interesting. I think my screens are going to have Utah at USC because I want to see how USC bounces back, and I want to see what that Utah offense looks like against just a dreadful USC defense. And uh, in the other screen, Duke at Florida State for at least a little while. But the main screen will have Ole Miss at Auburn. The latest slate, UCLA at Stanford. Stanford found something on offense last week. Now, granted, it was against Colorado's defense. Can they replicate it against UCLA's defense, which has been really good? So that's that's what I'm looking for on that one. So that is uh, that is the viewing guide for this week. Now let's talk about the most unlikely wins. All right, and I, I just read through these. This is not a long thing, but uh, but yeah, I, I think there are a lot of people that find this very interesting. The most unlikely wins from week number seven. And we've got Colorado State, 31-30 winners over Boise. 
And, of course, they were down by three touchdowns. They were down 30-10 to 10 with just over four minutes left in the game, and they won 31-30. to 30. They had an 8.53% postgame win expectancy. Fresno. Fresno beat Utah State 37-32 on the road. They had a 10.51% postgame win expectancy. Uh, Houston won on a Hail Mary against West Virginia. Right after West Virginia hit a Hail Mary, not really a Hail Mary, but you get a long touchdown pass with like 12 seconds left in the game. Um, 20.65% postgame win expectancy for the Houston Cougars. Stanford, 46-43, to came back from 29 to nothing down in the, um, in the second half. And, yeah, they had a 35.05% postgame win expectancy against Colorado. Illinois upset Maryland last week, which Maryland comes off the loss to Ohio State, just bleh. Uh, Illinois, 35.32% postgame win expectancy in a 27-24 upset win at Maryland. Oklahoma State, 39-32 over Kansas last week. They had a 31.51% postgame win expectancy. Uh, these numbers, courtesy of college football data. Uh, these guys are really good with the numbers and whatnot. So, 31.51% for Oklahoma State. Florida, 41-39 to over South Carolina. And <laughs> the Gators had an 11.07% postgame win expectancy in this one. The numbers were so skewed towards South Carolina. I remember looking at this box score going, South Carolina had almost the perfect game and didn't win. At one point, Spencer Rattler was 10 of 10 for like 145 yards and two touchdowns, and they were down in the game. Like, how does that make sense? (laughs) Uh, North Carolina. Yeah, very interesting one. They won 41 to 31 over Miami. But, uh, but they only had a 49.05% postgame win expectancy. Now, for those that are curious postgame win expectancy, it's basically the stats of the game, How many? what percentage of the time would you win that game if you were to play it over with the exact same stats? And, yeah, that's what postgame win expectancy is. Very simple. Very simple. All right, let's move into the early games of the week, and we'll go on and pull it up on the screen you guys uh, seem to love these, so we'll see exactly what we got. And we'll start off on Tuesday night. Da-da-da. Middle Tennessee heads to Liberty on Tuesday night. This one is 6 p.m. Central Time on CBS Sports Network. Liberty currently a 15-point favorite, total of 55 on this one. And let's pull it up. My numbers, so these are the full season numbers. It has Liberty minus 15.17 with a projected total of 50.95, so the under on that one. Um, Liberty's got so many advantages here, and yet eh, you got to be curious, right? Because while these are opponent-adjusted, Middle Tennessee has played the number 37 strength of schedule. Liberty has played the dead last strength of schedule here. So that's something you got to pay attention to. But all, I mean, Liberty's numbers are good. They're really good. And the weakness that Liberty has really is their rush defense. Well, Middle Tennessee is not good at running the ball. So that is a bit of an issue. Uh, But here are the numbers over the last four weeks. Liberty, over the last four weeks, number six in PPA margin against number 103 for Middle Tennessee. Um, What Liberty wants to do is run the ball. But Middle Tennessee's defense has been pretty good at stopping the run. The issue is... People are only running the ball like 38% of the time against them because they're so bad at stopping the pass. So I would imagine Liberty's going to take a few shots. Uh, They're number 15 in passing explosiveness on offense. Middle Tennessee is number 96 in passing explosiveness allowed. That's something to keep an eye on. As far as the offense for Middle Tennessee, which here, we'll pull up the the full web browser so uh, so that you guys can see this. I don't know where Middle Tennessee has any kind of an advantage on offense. Uh, they're not super explosive. They're not, like, there's no, there's no advantage, really. Uh, <laughs> that's that's about it. Maybe fourth down conversion percentage. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's we're not talking anything crazy. Five factors rank is, is Liberty's way, et cetera. If I had to lean a certain direction, which, uh, I mean, that's what this show is all about, making picks, uh, I would take Liberty to cover the 15 
on that one. So give me Jamie Chadwell. Give me that bunch. I like Liberty on Tuesday night. Now, moving along, Western Kentucky heads to Alabama to Jacksonville State. That's right. Rich Rod and company against uh, Tyson Helton and the boys. This one is 6.30 p.m. Central Time Tuesday on ESPN. Uh, is it ESPN? Too? No, ESPN. Wow. Wow, big-time spot for Jacksonville State. Uh, this one, Jacksonville State is a seven-point home dog to Western Kentucky with a total of 60 on this one. So, let's pull it up. Let's see what we got. Uh, and I didn't switch it over, of course. Full season stats, I've got Western Kentucky favored by 2.02. With a total of 52.27. So, these uh, these totals, eh, be wary of the totals. Just saying. Be wary of the totals. I've got it power rated as Western Kentucky minus 3.43. So, that's interesting. Um, there's a lot where, you know, at, at least when Jacksonville State has the ball, Western Kentucky has a bit of an advantage for the full season. Jacksonville State, really good. Really good on defense. Like, they have been fantastic. Uh, the only thing they're not great at is they're number 96 in PBA per pass, but that's for the full season. So let's pull up on this. And here, we'll pull it up on the screen. These are the numbers over the last four weeks. And it's got Western Kentucky by 5.08. This offense for Jacksonville State appears to have gotten a little bit worse. Definitely not great. Um, and if they want to run the ball, which is, I mean, they run it like 60% of the time, uh, that's not going to go well because that is the strength of Western Kentucky's defense. On the other side, uh, look, the defense is good for Jacksonville State, but over the last four weeks, they're number 112 in passing success rate allowed. Uh, that's, you know, that's not great. Uh, but they are number 27 in passing explosiveness allowed, uh, while Western Kentucky's offense is number three. I think Western Kentucky is going to find uh, some ways to you know, hit some big plays here. So, uh, do I think that Western Kentucky probably wins this game? Yes. Do I also think, uh, looking at the five factors, looking at, you know, everything else, uh, do I... <laughs> I think that Jacksonville State's going to keep this one close. That's what I'm looking at. So... Yeah, it, it's 5.08. It looks like Western Kentucky has played better over the last four weeks. I mean, you're looking at the number 64 PPA margin team against the number 40 PPA margin team. I think they're still probably pretty tight. And while Western Kentucky has played a significantly stronger strength of schedule, mm, I still think Jacksonville State is a pretty good team that will, eh, you know, they'll find a way to uh, to stay in this ball game. So, give me Jack State plus the seven here. I think... I still think Western Kentucky wins the game, but weeknight, home dog, etc. Yeah, that's that's the direction that I'm going to go on that one. Moving along, we got, uh, what, five more that we got to hit here? So let's make it snappy. Let's make this thing quick. Southern Miss heads to South Alabama. This one again on Tuesday night at 6.30 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. And South Alabama is an 18.5-point favorite with a total of 53 currently on this one. So, let's not mess around. Full season stats. I've got South Alabama by 16.69 on this. I've got South Alabama power rated by 13 here. So, eh, okay. I mean, it, this all makes sense. Which You guys will find this hilarious. Uh, there's, there's not a lot that points to... Southern Miss having any kind of an advantage here. Uh, over the last four weeks, yeah, 16.72. So, while, you know, it, <laughs> it feels like both teams have gotten a little bit better over the last four weeks than over the full season, and yet, mm, still not still not great. Still not great. Uh, number 31 PPA margin for South Alabama, number 87 for Southern Miss. Uh, Southern Miss just, uh, both of these teams just... Not great when it comes to defensive explosiveness allowed. Uh, my my projected total up there, I don't trust that one. Uh, this one's a, a, you know, a total of 53 on it. I might would look at the over, if only because of this here. And I'll, I'll pull it up on the full screen if you want to pause the, uh, the screen to look. Defensive explosiveness allowed, number 104 for South Alabama, number 109 over the last four weeks for uh, Southern Miss. 
that's that you're going to get big plays here. You're just going to get big plays. Uh, while it says 16.72, and you know that number's gone up to 18 and a half, I think I would trust South Alabama more to be able to get this win. So, I think that's the I think that's the direction I'm going to go. I, I will take South Alabama. Mm, man, 18 and a half is so many points. And South Alabama, they have made me look so foolish. Yeah, scrap it. We're going Southern Miss. Southern Miss plus 18 and a half. Trust the numbers. Trust the numbers. That's what I'm doing this time. Uh, this is a this is a stay away for me personally as far as playing games. I'm still going to put my typical $10 on it. But uh, but I wouldn't put a ton of money on this because can you trust either one of these teams? I mean, this is just... <laughs> uh, you look at turnover margin. Uh, you know, neither team is great. Like South, South Alabama is pretty good at getting takeaways. Uh, but number 63 in giveaways per game, eh, you know, very interesting. Very interesting. Neither, neither is good in penalties per game. You know, the typical fundamental stuff, neither team is very good at. But give me Southern Miss plus the 18 and a half. Maybe I'll look foolish again. We shall see. Next on the board, we head to Wednesday night. Florida International heads to Sam Houston on Wednesday night. This one, a 6 p.m. Central Time kick on CBS Sports Network. And Sam Houston, a five-point favorite, total of 39.5 on this. And let's get to the numbers. Full season, I have Florida International favored by 3.24 points here. And yet, Sam Houston is favored at home. You look at these offensive numbers. You look at, I mean, the, the defensive numbers are okay, I guess. Uh, I mean, they're not great for... These are two bad football teams. How's that? Two not good football teams. But these are the full season stats. Let's look at the last four games. Over the last four games, I've got Sam Houston favored by four. Well, uh, the offensive numbers have certainly looked better. They're not great as far as passing success rate over at Sam Houston, but they are number 74 PPA per pass. That's because they're number 57 in passing explosiveness. And the offensive line has held up pretty good against uh, any havoc that's been created. The number 40, uh, 48 in havoc allowed. So, you know, they still can't run the ball, but that might alleviate itself against this FIU defense because whew, they are number 87 rushing success rate allowed, uh, number 95 PPA per rush. But, you know, when it comes to passing, they're number 110 in passing success rate allowed, number 131 in PPA allowed per pass. Yeah, you're going to be able to score on this FIU team. Uh, toss in there the fact that FIU, it looks like their quarterback may not play. That's a bit of an issue. Uh, and yeah, I mean, FIU wants to be able to run the ball. At least, well, let me take that back. They want to be able to pass it because they're throwing it like 55% of the time over the last four weeks, but they're way better at running the ball. I don't know how much better you're going to be when your quarterback is out, so you're going to be so heavily reliant on it. I if I'm going away in this one, and here, we'll we'll pull it up on the on the screen in case anybody wants to pause and look at the numbers. You can do that. Uh, if I had to go away, I would take Sam Houston minus the five. That's the direction I would go here. Because I, I don't, the full season numbers, Florida National looked a lot better early on. Last week against UTEP just nearly broke my spirit. Because uh, they, I mean, that quarterback got hurt, and they just, they had so many opportunities. But Sam Houston here at home, I think this crowd's going to be fired up. I think they want a win, and I think that they are going to get it. So Sam Houston minus the five on that. We stay on Wednesday night, and we head over to UTEP, who I was just talking about. Who I was just talking about. Uh, the UTEP Miners, they host New Mexico State. And what a rivalry this game is. It's Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. And New Mexico State, a three-point road favorite right now. That number has moved heavily in favor of New Mexico State. Uh, total is 48.5 on this. So let's pull it up. Full season numbers have got New Mexico State minus 5.09. Again, strength of record, strength of schedule. Neither of these teams is very good. However, UTEP has 
just found ways to lose games that have just been brutal. Number 125 in turnover margin. Number 115 in points per play margin. Uh, number 112 in points per game. They're number 17, or points per game margin. Number 127, offensive points per game. And this is against the number 111 strength of schedule. I mean, it's it's brutal. Absolutely brutal. And yet, last week, they found a way to do stuff in Miami against FIU. Uh, at least early, they were. And then they couldn't do anything for the rest of the ball game. But regardless, it is what it is. So, New Mexico State, where is the advantage? On offense. Number 19 in offensive success rate. Uh, UTEP, number 79 in defensive success rate allowed. They're pretty good against the pass on defense. Uh, You can look right here on that. Number 30 in passing success rate allowed. Number 30 in passing explosiveness allowed. The issue there, while New Mexico State is good at throwing the football, um, they are way better at running the ball. (laughs) And actually, uh, you know what we can do here? We'll we'll swap this over. If you look over the last four weeks, uh, it's it's much better. Uh, New Mexico State is number 15 in PPA margin over the last four weeks. They have gotten a lot better. They have gotten a whole lot better. Uh, not as many mistakes, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, on defense, they are way better against the run now. Number eight PPA per rush over the last four weeks. Number two in rush rate because people are not... They're not trying to run the ball on them. They're trying to throw it, which makes sense. Uh, But UTEP would like to run the ball. So, eh, you know, either way, uh, you know, you look at net explosiveness, New Mexico State number 25, and UTEP number 68. That's a a big thing. This UTEP defense, again, really good at stopping the pass, but they cannot stop the run. And, you know, I, I think with New Mexico State number 30, in rushing success rate, etc. You guys know I love Jerry Kill. You know I love Jerry Kill. I'm going to take New Mexico State here. Like, I love it. I'll go on and put this up if, if anybody wants to pause the screen and look at the numbers and all that kind of stuff. You can do that. But, uh, yeah, I love Jerry Kill. I'm going to ride with New Mexico State minus the three on this one, even on the road, even in a big-time rivalry game. That's what I'm going to do. All right, two more to go. And I have gone long, and my wife might kill me, but we will see. (laughs) Two more. Uh, Heading to Thursday evening, and Rice heads to Tulsa. This one's 6 p.m. Central Time on ESPN2. Tulsa currently a three-point favorite at home, total of 57.5 on this one. Full season numbers have got Tulsa favored by 1.01. However, Tulsa has looked significantly better over the last four weeks. They have figured things out. They got their quarterback back. They are they are clicking on offense. I I like what Tulsa is doing now. So we can look at these numbers if you want to. You know, Rice over the full season, number twelve PPA per pass, number twenty three passing success rate. They have a big advantage against that Tulsa defense when it comes to the full season numbers. However, when you look at these numbers, yeah, they're number 28 PPA per pass for Rice's offense. Uh, And here, we'll pull up the full thing, of course. You can pause the screen if you want. Uh, But number 28 PPA per pass for Rice's offense against the number 20 PPA per pass allowed defense for Tulsa. Number 109 passing success rate for Rice over the past four weeks. And... Tulsa number 18 in that regard. So Tulsa has figured out some of their passing defense. Uh, on the other side, you know, Rice doesn't like to run the ball. Uh, well, that's the the weakness of the Tulsa defense right now. So uh, looking at, you know, what Tulsa likes to do on offense, they can run the ball really well. They're explosive, stuff rate's good, all that kind of stuff. Uh, they're okay passing the ball. Like uh, the numbers over the last four weeks like Tulsa by 8.73. I'm going to take Tulsa minus the three. I'm going to take them minus the three. Uh, you look at, you know, turnover margin, stuff like that. Uh, that's full season numbers. But even still, I mean, this is, it's still a wash, right? And I don't think that Tulsa is going to give the ball away nearly as much, especially at home, now that they've kind of got things settled down. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I will take 
Tulsa to cover the three on that one. Kevin Wilson doing big things, turning things around there with the Golden Hurricanes. And last game on the board, of course, James Madison heads to Marshall, and I got to figure out what is going on with this Marshall team. I just I gotta I gotta understand it. James Madison, a four point favorite total of fifty two on this. It's six PM Central on ESPN on Thursday night. Let's pull it up. Full season numbers. This thing's basically a pick'em. Right? Basically a pick'em. Uh who knows? But last week against Georgia State was a pick'em too for Marshall. So <laughs> they I think they played better earlier in the year. Um but man, like just uh, looking at these numbers. James Madison's defense. Like, it's just really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, but when they're on offense, they're not great. And they want to run the ball, but they have not been good at running the ball, at least not over the full season. We'll pull it up so you can see all of it. But that's that's the issue right there. They run the ball like 53% of the time for the full year, but they're number 116 PPA per rush, number 118 rushing success rate. They're not explosive. All that kind of stuff. Here's the problem. That's the full season stats. Now, we take a look at the last four weeks stats. And James Madison, I've got them favored by 5.26. So, they are, you know, still better at throwing the ball. but And they do it more than they did before. They're number two PPA per pass. Well, Marshall's defense is number four. Uh, Number 73 in passing success rate for James Madison. Well, Marshall is number four allowed. Marshall doesn't let uh, passing explosiveness hit him, like all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to rushing success rate, et cetera, you know, Marshall's still decent there. Uh, The issue, I mean, at Marshall, number 133 in rushing explosiveness allowed. Well, luckily for them, James Madison is not explosive uh, on the ground. They're just not. So... You know, number 130 in net explosiveness against number 107 in net explosiveness. Um, Do we see a lot of explosive plays from both sides? Eh, Maybe. Maybe we see a few, but nothing too crazy, I wouldn't think. Uh, This feels like the spot, and yes, I know. I talked to some of you James Madison guys in the comments before, and you'll see a little thing scroll over here that says, PSA, do not critique the picks unless you come in here and make the pick yourself. Like, if you tell me I'm on the wrong side beforehand, I will totally allow you to come in afterwards. But don't be jumping up in here after I pick against you and and try and jump on me, okay? I'm doing the best of my ability while looking at stats, et cetera, and, and going with what I have seen. Yes, I have watched these teams before, okay? I go through, I spend a lot of time doing this. So, uh, and you see it there. Don't hop in the comments to critique a pick after the game unless you have picked the game before. Look. I think this is a bounce-back spot for Marshall. They won this game 26-12 to last year. I think that they can hang within the four. That's what I'm going to do here. Marshall plus the four. I know the last four-week numbers would not show you that. But this is a good Marshall team. They got good talent. Uh, I know James Madison is good. I love Kurt Signetti. But, man... Marshall has to show something at some point. (laughs) They got to get better at some point. So give me Marshall plus the four on that one. All right. Let's uh, let's recap. I got Liberty. Well, here. We'll do that. 48-50. Here is the recap for the midweek games. All right. I'm taking Liberty minus 15. Jacksonville State plus 7. I like Southern Miss, plus 18.5. Sam Houston, minus 5. New Mexico State, minus 3. Tulsa, minus 3. And Marshall, plus 4 as a home underdog on Thursday night. That's the direction that I'm going here. (sighs) Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. I will be back on Thursday on here. Uh, Of course, Three Dog Thursday will be here at 2 p.m. Central Time. I will be in probably earlier than that with my 20 games for Saturday, right? Picks and predictions against the spread, all that kind of stuff. Exactly what I just did, but we'll have 20 more games where we're going to rush through them all. So, I appreciate you guys for being here. Don't forget, buymeacoffee.com slash winning cures. Don't forget my telegram. That is at GaryWCE, or just go to your browser on your phone, t.me 
slash Gary WCE. I am on Twitter at Winning Cures. I am on Instagram and TikTok at Gary WCE. I am on the BetUS College Football Show, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. I will be on, statistically speaking, with Kyle Lemlang and Blinken Riley uh, at some point this week. So I, I think we're recording tonight. I don't know when that thing's coming out. But either way, I'll be on with them. Uh, I'll be doing a lot of things. So make sure that you, one, subscribe to the channel, like the video, all the good stuff. And if you have waited until the very end, uh, sign up on that membership thing. Help me out. I would certainly appreciate it. All right, let's do this thing. Uh, Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. God bless college football. And hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. If you want to toss in a question, you can email me, Gary at WinningCuresEverything.com. Make sure and hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.